anniversary of the Bantu Education Act. This is one of apartheid's most offensively racist laws. It aim, basically, its aim was to prevent black people from receiving an education that would lead them to aspire to positions they would be allowed to hold in society. Instead, they were to receive an education designed to provide them with skills to serve their own people in the Bantustan homelands or to work in manual labor jobs under white control. Well, to find out how the South African education system has transformed since the abolition of the Bantu education system, we joined in studio by Professor Bram Fleisch from the Witz School of Education. Good to have you on Morning Live. Welcome. Good morning and thank you for inviting me. So we're talking about the 60th anniversary of, of, um, of the Bantu education, a racial education segregation act. In your view, why should this anniversary matter in a democratic country that we live in now? I think it's very important to understand where we've come from and the huge gains that have been made in the last 20 years. We need to kind of contextualize our system against the backdrop of apartheid and particularly Bantu education. Yeah, let's go back to then. You know, what radical changes did Bantu, the Bantu education system bring about? I think it's important to recognize that immediately after the end of the Second World War, there was a crisis in black education. Um, at the time, most schools were run by missionaries. There were duplications. There weren't inadequate. There weren't adequate school provision, and there was a, a whole range of other problems currently in the system. So the <coughs> Iceland Commission, which was set up to investigate the problems in black education, recommended the emergence of a single system for black education in South Africa. Yeah. But alongside that very important decision, there was also a decision to close all mission schools. And many of the mission schools, particularly some of the elite mission schools, were very important as bastions of quality in the system. Yeah. So schools like Lovedale, Adams, Lamana, and particularly a school like St. Peter's where Oliver Tumbo uh, taught, were places where the new black elite were being educated. And that was shut down? Essentially, after 1953, those schools were forced to close. Yeah. It's unbelievable when you, when you look back to it and you actually think that a law like that actually existed in a country. It's, just in, in, it's insane when you sit today and you look back at those days. I think one of the most important features of Bunch education was the segregation of children by language. Yeah. So one of the key components of it was that all children would have to go to either a Susutu school or Isizulu school. So if you take a township like Daviton, which was built uh, immediately after 1950s, in the early 1950s, there was a single road, Iceland Road, which uh, transversed Daviton. And children were forced to go to either a Susutu school, which was south of the road, or an Nguni school, which was north of the road. Mm. So you never, irrespective of what the real realities or your choice were, you were forced to put uh, your child in a school that was specifically designated as an ethnic school. And, and, and basically, um, as I said in the introduction, uh, the type of education that they received was to get skills um, to, to build up the homelands. I mean, is that, is that basically what it was about? I Nothing think there were, there were a couple of different phases of Bantu education after 1953. Initially, there was a growth of urban schooling, but by the 60s, there was clearly an effort to f shift the focus towards the Bantu stands and to build the, the emerging homelands. Mm -hmm. And it was clear that much of the secondary and tertiary education was focused in the homelands, where the assumption was that the new black elite would remain in their urban or their rural homeland areas. Yeah. I mean, you know, 19 years into our democracy, a lot of people still say that the effects of Bantu education are still in society and they're still, uh, uh, um, they're still affecting our education system as we sit here now in, in the year 2013. What's your take on this? I think there certainly are strong legacies. I mean, one of the features of, of our school system was the extensive use of corporal punishment. Yeah. In 1996, with the passage of the South African Schools Act, it outlawed corporal punishment explicitly, but unfortunately, we still have uh, um, schools that aren't fully con uh, compliant with that law. Yeah. That just gives you a sense that there are still legacies that endure in our system. Mm. I think that there's also the legacy of the chronic underfunding of um, black schools, or at that time, 
bunch of education schools. So essentially from the 50s all the way to the 70s, black schools received a fraction of the per capita spending that was spent on white schools. Yeah. And I mean, looking at the situation today, I mean, just a, a very quick snapshot of the education system. How do you feel about it now? I think we've made enormous progress in the last uh, 19 years. I think the legislation that's been in put, put in place, the South African Schools Act, provided a very important framework for developing a genuinely democratic school system. And even though we're beginning to work out some of the details, and the court case that recently was reported, yesterday in fact, uh, suggests a slight different alignment. There has clearly been a very important new partnership between schools and provincial and national department put in place. All right. Let's leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, really interesting conversation uh, today marking the 60th anniversary of the Buntu Education Act. And uh, yeah, here we go. 20 years in democracy has the education system. It obviously has. I mean, it's improved incredibly, but there's still so much work to be done. But uh, that's another conversation for another day. Thank you so much. Thanks for being our guest here. Bram Fleisch is from the Witt School of Education.